Hello. I've been fascinated by technology and computers all my life, from personal computers at home to big business machines. And today, I'm in awe of artificial intelligence, or AI. And it's not because it's a gadget or a gizmo or some new toy to play with. It's, it's far more profound than that. Artificial intelligence has the potential to radically transform how we understand our reality. So what do I mean by that? Well, when we construct our reality, we do it through observation. It's what we see, it's what we hear, it's how we learn about the, the places around us. But computers are much better than us at doing all of this. They can see further than we can, they can hear better than we can. And what's more, they remember everything. And memory is very important. When we think about knowing and what that means to know something, it's a combination of what we observe, what we see, and what we remember, our memory. Memory, as we all know, is a fallible thing. And we forget lots of things all the time, and that's a problem. And sometimes we forget things that are deliberate. So we forget what the weather was like a month ago, because it's not really important. We forget faces on the train and so on. And things we really need to remember, we try really hard to remember, like the names and of, of family and friends, like pin numbers, we try and do that. Computers don't need to be so selective. And as societies, we inherit these failings from, from individual people. We forget things, and it can be a dangerous thing to happen. If we forget our history, if we forget what happened in the past, then suddenly the way in which we construct our reality, our worldview, the way in which we see the world, it can turn into something not so good, not so good. So maybe machines can help. Today, artificial intelligence, or AI, is about learning. And that's a new kind of machine. To up to now, when we build machines, we build them to do stuff. We build them to make our lives better. So we build cars to make us go faster, and clocks to tell the time, and so on. But AI machines are not designed to do stuff. They're designed to learn. They're designed to figure out what's going on all around them, and within that context, decide for themselves how best to act. These machines are constructing new realities according to their environments. And that's a fascinating place to be. What it means is that these machines can be much more helpful to us. They begin to learn about our environment and become useful and personalized in making recommendations. So, as the machines evolve, if we're going to make a decision about something simple and banal, like what to have for lunch, we can ask the machine how many calories in a chicken casserole. And increasingly, the machines themselves will make a recommendation as to what we should have, based on what we pass preferences and all that kind of stuff. And we see that all the time on our smartphones. And they're increasingly becoming more and more personalized, more and more useful. What they're becoming is empathetic. They're developing models of empathy, models of reality that understand fundamentally who we are, what we need, and what we desire at any point in time. These empathetic models are extremely powerful. They get to the soul of who we are. And it might be that advertising companies funded all the development of this stuff because it helps us to sell stuff, and that's certainly true. But there are applications in oncology and cancer diagnoses and all sorts of really good things that are happening because of all of this. But there's a dark side, too, and that's a concern. So in December 2016, this is Edgar Madison Welsh. He walked into the, uh, the pizza place in, in, in this pizza place in Washington, D.C., and he discharged a firearm because he believed that it was the center of a pedophile ring run by Hillary Clinton. And it, he really believed this. This was his reality, and he wasn't alone. There were other people like him who believed the same thing. A couple of days later, another guy called the pizza place next door, said he was coming to save the kids. He was going to finish what the other guys started. Other people started saying, this is all a setup just to debunk the original conspiracy theory and protect the Clintons. The point here is that this guy wasn't trying to do bad stuff. He was trying to save the kids in his reality that had been constructed in all sorts of chat rooms and computer-mediated environments that had built up this entirely new vision of the world, this new sense of how the world worked and where things were bad and so on. He was doing a good thing. Now, he was administering vigilante justice, and that's a bad thing, but his intentions were good. 
So before you all say, oh, I'm no conspiracy theorist, I can judge fake news from, from truth, how do you know what you know? Think about all of the things you've learned this week, this month, this year. Think about how many of those things came to you through the internet, through screens of some form or another. Me information that's been mediated by these machines, and in many cases, even though you don't know it, artificial intelligence engines in there building models and trying to understand what your preferences are. Now, when we talk about AI, a lot of people talk about doomsday scenarios and the end of the world. People talk about lethal autonomous drones, these violent terminators coming to kill us all in our sleep. And it's certainly true that AI makes for extraordinarily powerful machines. We really need to keep that in check. But in the 20th century, we came up with chemical, biological and nuclear weapons, and we managed not to annihilate ourselves. So we'll figure that out. And there are going to be other challenges. People say AI is going to take all our jobs. And, you know, it's certainly true they're going to make some changes. But we don't have typing pools anymore. We don't have switchboard operators. And we've managed to get by. In 20 years, we may not have any truck drivers left. That's not going to be a problem. We'll figure that out, too. I believe that the real challenge from AI is going to be in upending our systems of knowledge, our epistemology. AI is going to undermine how we know what we know. It's going to challenge our core science, our most fundamental beliefs. Today, it might be just rumors about politicians or uh, socially divisive issues like immigration. But soon, all of the things that we think we know, our science, our history, might be redefined by machines. And that is the single most important challenge for our civilization in the next century. Thank you.